Yo, thrill chases. Ever get that creepy vibe from isolated islands, like they're hiding some dark secret? In those pulse-pounding movies where nature goes full chaos mode, it's always an island, right? Take the fictional Skull Island, home to a colossal gorilla, massive bugs, and prehistoric terrors that'd make you bolt for the hills. Pure Hollywood fantasy, sure, but there was a real place just as wild 66 million years ago, the Comoros Islands. Not the idyllic tropical haven of today, but a late Cretaceous nightmare zone where Earth was a carnival of bizarre beasts and these islands were the epicenter of insanity. Buckle up for a heart-racing dive into a world where danger was your constant shadow. You won't want to look away. Rewind 66 million years and the Comoros Islands were a rugged, lonely archipelago floating in the Indian Ocean, cut off from Africa and Asia by endless waves. They weren't always so isolated. Way back, they were part of Gondwana, sharing critters with what's now Madagascar and India. But when they split off, their animals were left to fend for themselves, evolving into a cast of freaks shaped by island pressures. Some shrank, others ballooned, and all were straight up alien. Astonishingly, the island's shape back then mirrored today's, just positioned closer to Madagascar and tilted south. This seclusion was like cranking evolution to 11. Creatures that hitched a ride from Gondwana got wild makeovers, crafting a unique ecosystem. But when the Comoros went full hermit, things got unhinged. Island rules, dwarfism and giantism hit like a sledgehammer. The archipelago is decent sized, but not big enough for everyone to go giant. Toss in total isolation, and you've got a fever dream of a place, teeming with life across swampy deltas, roaring rivers and jungles so dense they soaked up floodwaters. Danger wasn't just lurking, it was the air you breathed. The weather? A savage beast. Not blazing hot or bone chilling, but flipping between brutal droughts and sudden apocalyptic downpours. Fossil beds scream of flash floods that had sweep the land, drowning anything too slow to scramble. You'd need a kayak, not a raincoat, to survive the deluge. And if the storms didn't get you, the locals would. Meet Night Reaver, the island's undisputed king. A theropod dino stretching 7.2 meters, 24 feet, and weighing over a ton. Its skull was wide and blunt, with teeth made to grip, not slash. Tiny arms, yep, but its legs were tanks, built for chasing down anything that dared move. It looked like a dino stitched from mismatched parts, but it was a death machine. Those stubby arms didn't make Night Reaver a pushover, it was a giant slayer. It hunted behemoths like Comro Titan, a titanosaur grazing the plains. These plant eaters were massive, think freight train sized, but Night Reaver's broad skull could take their thrashing, clamping on like a vice. Fossils show Comoro Titan bones with Night Reaver bite marks, proving even the biggest weren't safe. And this predator wasn't picky, it might have eaten its own. Bones with matching bites hinted cannibalism, like a dino hyena ripping into anything, even its kin in a feeding frenzy. No loyalty in this jungle, but Nightweaver wasn't the only terror. Island gigantism let other critters swell to monstrous sizes. Titanocentipede, a massive arthropod, wasn't your average creepy crawly. Fossils suggest some reached 1.2 meters, four feet long, with venomous pincers that could paralyze small dinos or mammals. They scuttled through the undergrowth, their tough exoskeletons and slow metabolisms letting them outlast lean times. Rivers were no sanctuary. Swamp Dragon, a 5.1 meter, 17 foot Notosuchian, ruled the waters with jagged teeth and armor like a battleship, snagging anything near the banks. Not every creature was a nightmare. Tiny Croc, a croc cousin, was downright adorable, like a croc puppy hybrid. 
at 0.7 meters or 2.3 feet with the squashed snout and leaf-shaped teeth. It munched ferns, not meat. It might have dug burrows to dodge Night Reaver, but it was still easy pickings. Then there's Helltoad, the frog from the underworld. At 43 centimeters, 17 inches, and 4.8 kilos, 10.6 pounds, it was a monster with a jaw wide enough to gulp baby dinos and a bite force rivaling wolves. Spiky crests and armored skin made it a tiny tank. Mammals, shockingly, thrived in the shadows. Scent Seeker, the biggest at 9 kilos, 19.8 pounds, ate roots and seeds, but had a schnoz sharper than a bloodhound, with 15% of its brain wired for smell. Pulse Beast had a skull packed with nerve openings, hinting at a sensory superpower, possibly detecting vibrations to evade predators. Quick Fang, a 2.2 meter, 7.2 foot theropod, sported odd hook-like front teeth for snagging bugs or fruit. Its slow growth, taking a decade to mature, shows it was built for tough times when floods or droughts crushed food supplies. Volcanic activity turned up the chaos. The Comoros sat near a tectonic hotspot with eruptions spewing ash that choked the skies, triggering many climatic shifts. Volcanic activity turned up the chaos. Fossils show plant die-offs followed by bursts of new growth, forcing animals to adapt fast. Volcanic activity turned up the chaos. Some, like Quickfang, evolved flexible diets, while others, like Titanocentipede, could enter torpor shutting down during ash falls to survive the gloom. Fossil pollen reveals bizarre plants like razor fern with serrated fronds that deterred herbivores, reshaping grazing patterns. The island's isolation also sparked unique behaviors. Night Reaver fossils show worn claws, suggesting it dug for tubers during droughts, a rare move for theropods. Swamp Dragon's thick osteoderms hint at ritual combat, with males clashing for river turf. These adaptations paint a hyper-competitive ecosystem where every niche was a battlefield. Even the skies were deadly. Skystrike, a pterosaur with a 4.2-meter, 14-foot wingspan, swooped over rivers, snatching fish and small mammals with needle-like teeth. Its fossils, found in coastal cliffs, show lightweight bones for gliding, but scars suggest it brawled with Night Reaver over carrion. Marine life added another layer of terror. Reef Stalker, a mosasaur patrolling coastal waters, stretched 6 meters, 20 feet, with a jaw packed with conical teeth for crushing ammonites and fish. Its fossils, found in lagoon deposits, show a streamlined body for ambushing prey. Meanwhile, spinefin, a predatory fish with serrated dorsal spines, hunted in schools, swarming injured dinos that waded too deep. These aquatic killers made the shores as deadly as the jungles. The Comoros ecosystem wasn't just about predators, iron vine. A climbing plant with fossilized tendrils formed dense canopies that sheltered small mammals but trapped unwary dinos in thorny snares. Burrodeast, a mammal the size of a badger, dug complex tunnels to escape predators with fossilized chambers suggesting it stored seeds for dry seasons. These survivors show how life clung to every niche, adapting to the island's brutal swing. Fossil evidence also reveals social dynamics. Comoro titan bones, found in clusters, suggest herd behavior, with juveniles shielded by adults. But Night Reaver's pack hunting tactics, hinted at by aligned footprints, could overwhelm even these defenses. Smaller predators like Quickfang likely scavenge their kills, their flexible teeth letting them exploit leftovers. This web of interactions made the Comoros a high-stakes arena where every move was a gamble. The island's geology added fuel to the fire. Tectonic activity created unstable cliffs, with fossil slides showing dinos buried in sudden collapses. 
Hot springs, rich in minerals, supported lush oases, but scalded careless visitors. Fossilized bones bear chemical burns. These hazards forced animals to stay sharp, with pulse beasts' vibration sense likely key to dodging rockfalls. This unhinged ecosystem ruled its bubble until the KT extinction 66 million years ago. The asteroid strike, despite being worlds away, wiped it all out. No modern creatures trace back to these oddballs, suggesting a total reset. Maybe that's a mercy. Imagine snorkeling with a cannibal dino or a frog that bites like a bear. Thanks for diving into this wild saga of the ancient Comoro silence. Smash that like and subscribe, and I'll see you next for another heart-pounding plunge into nature's darkest corners.